Hello and welcome to this course on model predictive control. In this week, we are discussing practical ways of using linear quadratic control. We started this week by doing a recap of what we have covered in the past three weeks of this course. Then we discussed linear quadratic Gaussian, which is basically doing output feedback linear quadratic control. We showed that the separation principle works, which basically means that um, output feedback linear quadratic control is equivalent to solving a Kalman filter for state estimation, followed by using the results of Kalman filter in linear quadratic regulator. So LQG due to separation principle is equivalent to Kalman filter plus LQR. Thereafter, we spent a couple of videos discussing uh, practical ways of implementing LQR. Uh, LQR problem is a problem of the regulating the system state to the origin, but the problems that we often encounter in realistic control systems are that of disturbance rejection and set point tracking. So how to implement disturbance rejection and set point tracking are uh, in the LQ framework was something that we discussed in the last couple of lectures. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about practical cases of state estimation. In the previous video, we discussed uh, disturbance modeling, which will form the foundation for this particular lecture. We had our system given by x k plus 1 equal to a x k plus plus nu k. What we said in the previous lecture was that this epsilon k and this nu k being white noise Okay, in a lot of practical cases, epsilon and nu as written uh, in a naive way like this are not necessarily white. What do we do in cases like that? And basically the reason why LQ control and Kalman filter has become popular is uh, as I'm going to show you today is that these assumptions of white noise are not very restrictive and we can do a very simple approach in order to uh, ensure that various different cases can be handled in the Kalman filter framework as well. Okay, what are the various cases? The various cases we talked about is one epsilon is stationary or uh, the, sorry, the noise is stationary or noise is non stationary. If it's a stationary noise, it could either be white or a stationary colored noise. If it is non stationary noise, it could either be integrating white noise or uh, integrating white noise that is passed through a linear filter. Okay, so all of these cases can be easily handled uh, in the state estimation framework, the standard state estimation framework that we have discussed so far. So what do we mean by that is this is our process that we usually think about would be over u and we get y and we have our new okay but what if this is not really the process but what if we have uh, some other thing that gets added in order to get y as well okay and this what this gets added could be what I'm going to generically call as WK. Okay, so WK is something that is going to get added in uh, in order to give Y and the measurement new is going to be added in order to get YK. Okay, and then how do we handle this particular situation is what we are going to cover today. And here we have epsilon K. Okay and uk okay so this is the overall structure i will call this ym because that's y measured okay so how do we handle a situation like this okay what we have seen is that if case one if it is stationary noise okay then our model is going to be given by xk plus one equal to axk plus b u k and to make it a little bit more general I will call it as uh, uh, b w w k okay or actually I will just call it as b e w k okay and y k equal to c x k 
let's let's just call it new k you could also add de multiplied by wk over here and nothing really is going to change uh, significantly okay so this is the case and if w is stationary noise okay then by spectral factorization theorem you can write wk is nothing but hq multiplied by epsilon k where epsilon k is a zero mean white noise sequence okay so this was something that we did in the previous lecture if this is how we have the overall system we can convert this into a state space model or in the identification process or in the model generation process you already get a state space model it doesn't matter where this model comes from but any signal signal wk by spectral factorization theorem can be represented as x w k plus 1 equal to a sorry a w x w k plus b w epsilon k w k is c w x w k okay so if wk is a stationary signal then eigenvalues of a lie in unit disk okay if they don't then we don't have a stationary signal okay so now we basically have this particular model and this particular model which we can combine by writing our z okay so therefore is defined as augmented state okay therefore we can write zk plus 1 equal to something multiplied by zk plus something multiplied by uk plus something multiplied by epsilon k okay so let's look at what all these some things are going to be okay so zk Plus one equal to so x k plus one equal to a x k plus b u k so x k plus one equal to a x k plus b u k plus b e w k and w k is nothing but c w x w k right so this is what we are gonna use over here okay so x k plus 1 equal to a x k okay plus b e multiplied by c w w k plus b multiplied by u k plus 0 multiplied by epsilon k okay what is going to be x w k plus 1 x w k plus 1 is 0 multiplied by x k plus a w multiplied by x w plus b w multiplied by epsilon plus 0 multiplied by u okay so 0 multiplied by x k plus a w multiplied by x w k plus 0 multiplied by u k plus we have uh, b w multiplied by epsilon k okay so this is what we have and y k is nothing but C, sorry, CZK 
plus mu k. Okay, so y k is going to be nothing but c multiplied by x k plus zero multiplied by x w k. Or if you want it more general, you can write this as d e multiplied by z. So this is the overall structure. So we can write this as phi. This as gamma. This as gamma e. This as so psi. Okay, and therefore we would be able to write write. Uh, let's put it in blue. Z k plus one equal to phi z k plus gamma u k plus gamma e epsilon k and y k is psi z k plus nu k okay and this is exactly in the same structure as required by our kalman filter so if you look at this and if you look at this this is exactly in the same form this we can replace this as epsilon bar k is zero mean white noise with covariance is going to be equal to gamma e multiplied by q multiplied by gamma e transpose okay this is something that we have done before Okay, so this is a very straightforward way in which you use state augmentation in order to handle uh, any type of stationary non-white stationary noise WK. What if case number two? What if your noise is noise non-stationary? Okay. If it's non-stationary, then we just difference this equation. So if we have, let's look at, uh, if we have equation of this sort. So let's take the case where the noise is integrating white noise. So what we can do is the rate based formulation, we can use that and we can do differencing of this so you will get delta x plus delta eta k and in the previous lecture we have seen that delta eta k is nothing but epsilon k okay and you have y k plus 1 or sorry y k is nothing but y k minus 1 plus c times delta x k plus nu k. So these are our equations. So as we have done before, we will do state augmentation if z k is nothing but delta x k let's look at what our equation for y k plus 1 is going to be y k plus 1 is going to be equal to y k plus c times delta x k plus 1 plus nu k plus 1 okay and again nu k or nu k plus 1 is still a white noise sequence so it does not really matter and this can be written as c multiplied by a well i will just copy paste this from here okay so this is what we have so now our zk plus 1 equal to something multiplied by zk plus something multiplied by uk plus something multiplied by epsilon k so let's look at the first equation first equation is a delta x equal to a delta x plus 0 y plus 
b delta u and i'll have to change this a little bit okay and plus i multiplied by epsilon okay and then you have the next row and that is going to be y k plus 1 equal to i multiplied by y k okay plus c a delta x k plus c b delta u k plus c multiplied by epsilon k okay and y k is nothing but 0 i z k plus nu k okay so this but these become your overall equations that you can use And this is how you handle a non-stationary integrating white noise. What if it's an integrating white noise that passes through a filter? No problem. You can difference that filter equation to get x k x w equal to a x w plus b epsilon and delta w equal to c delta x w plus uh, uh, d multiplied by epsilon. Okay, and that's all there is to it and you can combine the approach that we used in this part and in this particular part in order to straightforwardly get that equation as well. Okay, so once you have your overall equations in the form zk plus 1 equal to phi zk plus gamma uk or gamma delta uk plus gamma e epsilon k and yk You can apply Kalman filter or LQR to this augmented system. You can apply it to this augmented system in exactly the same way as we have learned in the previous and the week, previous week and the week before that. Okay, so that's the overall approach that we are going to use in this uh, in order to handle stationary as well as non-stationary non-white noise sequences. Okay, so thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Thanks and bye.